Ni hao. Hello, my name is Alyssa Carson, call sign Blueberry. And at the age of three years old, I decided to become an astronaut and go to Mars. I would not accept any limits for my journey. I would not let my age limit me on my dream. My journey began while watching a children's show and the characters were acting out a mission to Mars. I then went and asked my dad if anyone had been to Mars. He explained to me that man had been to the moon, but not to Mars. It would be my generation to make the trip to Mars. I decided at that moment there would be nothing limiting my ability to get to Mars. I started by studying everything I could find on Mars. And as I got older, my dad took me to space camp in Huntsville, Alabama in the United States, which is where, at the age of eight years old, I won my first award. I won the Right Stuff Award, which is the highest award you can receive at space camp. They give this award to the person who they think has all the specialties to win this award. It was when I won this award, my dad shed tears because he knew nothing would limit my progress in my quest to get to Mars. Since then, I have done everything I could to continue my pursuit of Mars. I've been to space camp in Huntsville, Alabama in the United States 11 times. I've also been to space camp in Izmir, Turkey, and I've also attended Space Camp Canada in Laval, Canada, making me the first person to complete all the NASA space camps in the world. I have also become the first person to visit all the NASA visitors to complete the NASA passport program, visiting all the NASA visitor centers in the United States. I've, I completed this task only four months after it started. I have also become an ambassador for Mars One, a group sending people to Mars to colonize Mars. Now at 13, I will continue with my studies, attending more training, including a week with the Euro Space Camp in Belgium this month. In addition to my studies and attending camps, I will obtain my scuba and skydiving certifications, as well as my pilot's license by the time I am 18. I plan to attend Cambridge in the United Kingdom, International Space University in France, and Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston, Massachusetts in the United States, which is, which is where I will attend all my colleges. The reason I do these things is to make sure I continue to have unique things on my resume so that I am one of the people picked to make the trip to Mars. I currently attend the Baton Rouge International School, where I learn all my subjects in English, French, Spanish, and Chinese by teachers that are from all over the world. So not only are they native speakers of the language, but they share their culture as well. I feel as though my teachers bringing in their worldly experiences keeps me from feeling limited to being in Baton Rouge all day. And I know this is yet another reason why I will not allow any limits in my quest for Mars. This will also give me the ability to be able to interact and converse with people from all over the world, as it will take the world to send people to Mars. There can be no limits in our quest to explore space. Now, hearing all of these things, you might think that space is my entire life, but I do keep a balanced life. I play the piano, dance ballet, play competitive soccer, and I'm involved with Girl Scouts, Junior Beta, and Book Club. So you could say that I have not let my dream limit me on living my childhood. I still have fun with my friends, sleepovers, dances, and parties. My friends sometimes think I'm crazy with my dream, but they are always very supportive. But my favorite thing will always be my dream and the training involved with getting to Mars. I love completing missions at space camp and feeling like I'm finally taking my trip 
to the red planet. So how or why do we need to get to Mars? As we sit in this beautiful 2500 year old Greek theater, I am reminded of an old Greek proverb. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. Just think about this for a minute. A society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in. How does this quote reflect our desire to go to Mars? This proverb tells us we must plan ahead for future generations. We must continue to pursue to be inquisitive and exploratory, encouraging people of all ages. Our schools are teaching children today for jobs that not only do not yet exist, but may even exist on Mars. We have to continue our human nature to explore. Our past generations have explored and made our world a better place. But where do we go from here? As our technology is increasing more and more every day, it is now time for us to explore beyond this planet. Remember, a single planet species will become extinct. Do you want to follow the path of the dinosaurs? The dinosaurs could only explore this planet and so became extinct. I don't want to see that happen with the human species who do have the ability to leave this planet. Our planet is bombarded by objects every day. It is only a matter of time before another big one changes everything we have here on Earth. I want to plant the tree. Sure, there are lots of risks in going to Mars, but I believe the rewards outweigh the risk. If we stay here, then we know for sure we will follow the path of the dinosaurs. But if we explore, we can find the rewards that are waiting for us out in the universe. So I am this old man that is dedicating my life to training, learning, and teaching so that we will take that next step and get us to Mars, our second Earth, so that future generations can live on Mars and continue the exploration of space. And the human race can go on and survive for thousands of more years. So I say to you, do everything you can to plant the tree. But you might ask, what can I, as one person, accomplish? While trying to find the age of the Earth, Claire Patterson, a geochemist, discovered the amount of lead poisoning being put out in the atmosphere through lead and fuels and in containers with food, toys, etc. He knew he had to do something before people started dying all over the world. In his 20-year journey, he got lead removed from fuels, paints, and other items. Lead levels in people's blood were lowered 80% in a very short amount of time. It took him 20 years, but he did not quit. He knew he had to plant the tree. He was successful at his task. One person can make a humongous difference in our past or our future. So how do we get to the point where we're sending humans to Mars? Less than 200 kilometers from here, in Athens, Greece, where the Olympic Games began, we must take that same Olympic spirit where athletes come from all over the world. And even though they compete against each other, they become friends and they have mutual respect for each other. We must take that same Olympic spirit and bring the brightest minds, scientists, engineers, and world leaders to come together in friendship and mutual respect and solve how we get to Mars and further space exploration. It is vital for our future of all of us as a human race. 
We cannot limit ourselves. These people must plant the tree. So what do we do when we get to Mars? The current plans have people heading to Mars in about 20 years. Some plans are one way, like Mars One in the Netherlands, and some include a return trip. We know with the technology we have today, we could terraform Mars in about 300 years to become another Earth. For us to have a place to live or another point to leave from to explore further into space. It may sound like a lot of time to terraform Mars, but remember how many centuries we have been here on Earth. In only 53 years, we went from sending the first man into space, Yuri Gagarin, to where we are today. We have walked on the moon, had a satellite leave our solar system, and sent rovers and satellites all over our solar system. And landing on other planets, including Mars. Think about how our technology is increasing and what technology we might have in 20 years. We now need to get people on Mars to speed up the process of understanding Mars. It has been said by the Curiosity team that they could complete a year's work by the Curiosity rover in an hour with people on Mars. It is now time for us to plant the tree. Now, remember back in 2012 when everyone thought the world was ending because, well, the Mayan calendar was ending. What they didn't realize was that the Mayan calendar is based on cycles. And so on December 21st, 2012, the calendar started over with another long count. What we have also seen is that at the ending of these cycles, we have seen such great changes in our past. I believe that the ending of the Mayan calendar is the time for change in our world. Just think about the changes we have seen since 2012, including the progress of 3D printing and solutions we have found for problems we had to get to Mars. This is truly a time of change, a time to explore, a time to evolve, and a time to plant the tree. We cannot have any limits in furthering our exploration of space. In 20 years, I'll be on Mars. Where will you be? Will you help plant the tree? I am the Mars generation. So if we could get the lights to dim down. So I would ask for y'all to look up at the night sky. Here we see planets and stars. Currently, there are five planets above us. There is Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Our universe is out there waiting for us. The rewards are there. It is now time for us to take our part and get us to space and further space exploration. It is now time for us to take that next step and go further into space. Thank you. Thank you.